Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a median composite of Sentinel-2 images, which has five days temporal resolution. Sentinel-2 satellite is managed by the European Space Agency, ESA. A median composite is basically getting the median temporal value for one or more bands in the same location. One of the benefits of median composites is that if you are building a mosaic of satellite images to cover a whole country without cloud coverage, creating median composite of each image in the mosaic can solve the problem. In other words, you will have the mosaic of the entire country without cloud coverage. So now in this notebook, I have downloaded five Sentinel-2 images of the same location in Egypt. The images are in this folder. These are the unzipped folders for each image, and here is where to find the images. So for example, for this one, under manual, image data, okay. So you can see, for example, this is the image for band 3, and they have like 12 bands, and we are interested in this specific image, which is called the TCI. TCI stands for True Color Image. These images have the three visible bands of red, green, and blue. I downloaded the data using a Python package called SentinelSat. Now going to the code, and by the way, I'm using a virtual environment kernel here. If you want to learn more about using virtual environment kernels in JupyterLab, you can refer to my video on my YouTube channel explaining how you would do that. On the first cell, I'm importing the packages of OS, XArray, and Raster.io. XArray basically is a library that you can use to create labeled multidimensional arrays. So think of a NumPy 3, 4, or 5 dimensional array where you can assign labels to dimensions and use the assigned labels to search and extract data more easily. The other important feature of XArray is the usage of Dask capabilities under the hood to distribute the operations. If you want to learn more about XArrays, you can refer to their documentations. In XArray, there is this method called OpenRasterIO. You might be thinking, why don't we just use Raster.io directly? Actually, I have tried to create the median composite using pure GDAL and pure Raster.io. The code took a very long time to generate the median composite. Since XArray, as I mentioned, uses Dask power, the time it took XArray to create the median composite is almost 4 minutes on my computer, compared to almost 35 minutes using pure GDAL or Raster.io. I'm not saying that this is the best way to create a median composite performance-wise. If you have suggestions on speeding up the process here, please share it in the comments section for everyone to see. As for Raster.io, I'm using it to write the median image at the end, which means saving the image. I could not find a method in X-Ray to do so. I'm also using Raster.io in one of the functions to read what is called image profile. I will talk more about the image profile later on. Okay, now in this cell I have two functions. The first function will basically search the given path for TCI images, create image objects, and append the image objects to a list called TCI images. I'm also getting the profile of the first image since all the images are in the same location. The profile basically holds metadata such as projection in a dictionary format. This profile dictionary can be used to write new images, or in other words, to save new images. The second function generates the median image. Basically, I'm looping over each band, creating a list of relevant bands, for example, once in the first loop cycle, concatenating band once with a new dimension called band and appending the medians into this list called band medians. So again, in this line, I'm creating a list of bands once using the XArray select method, which selects the two dimensional array of band one. In this line, the XArray concat method will create a 3D array of all bands once. 
This parameter is for a new dimension, since on the previous line, when we extracted each band, the extracted bands are only 2Ds of X and Y. In this line, I'm creating the median of each band composite and appending the median to band's medians. After looping three times, I'm just concatenating the three median bands into a 1x array object, which will result in a 3D array of band x, y dimensions. If this is still confusing to you, the next illustrations can be helpful. In this cell, I'm creating the images list and the image profile object. I also typed images 0, which will print the details about the first image object. If you are familiar with Dask, then this illustration is familiar to you as well. So as you can see, the first image has three dimensions, X, Y, and Band. And here it says coordinates. It might be confusing at the beginning, but X-Array uses the term coordinates instead of labels. So think of it this way. Coordinates here basically are the labels. So the first coordinate or label is called band, and as you can see, it has three values, one, two, three. If you remember back in this line, I used the select band equal one, for example, which means extract the first slice of the 3D array, and the result will be a 2D array with only two coordinates or two labels, X and Y. I hope this is clear for you right now. And if you look here, it says there are 121 chunks. So X array uses these chunks along with Dask to speed up the process. In the next cell, I'm getting the medians. And if we want to see the results, we type median image. You might be wondering now, how come the calculations were very fast? Actually, until now, no computations have been made. X-Array is using what is called lazy evaluation. If you want to read more about lazy evaluation, I suggest that you look into Dask documentations. But in short, X-Array is putting everything ready for computation. If we want to run the computations, we can use the command compute. I'm not going to use it here because it is being automatically called when we are writing or saving the output to a new raster. Finally, we can write the median raster, but first in this line, I'm changing the driver to GeoTIFF instead of the original Sentinel-2 format of JPEG-2000. The reason I'm doing so is that I noticed some errors in median results when I kept the driver to GP2. But when I used the driver GTIFF instead, results were accurate after testing multiple random pixels. I hope this problem will be fixed in the new release of X-Array or maybe from Raster.io or even maybe from GDAL, since Raster.io uses GDAL. In this cell, actually the compute method I explained earlier is running first to run the computations and then the file median stiff will be created. This will take almost 4 minutes on my laptop. I will get back once it is done. Okay, it's done. Now we can see the image created on the path. So if I go to output, this is the image just created like seconds ago. Let's run one test on QGIS to see if medians are accurate. Okay, so I have now the original five images. I bookmarked this area where there are some clouds. I will zoom to it. Okay, so it should be in one of these images. Okay, right here. So it's this one here, or sorry, the fourth one. Okay, so let me zoom in to one of the clouds. Okay, okay, let us test this cell, for example. So if I, I think it's this one, okay. So if I click here, Okay, so the values are 102, 107, 104 from the three bands. On the second image, it's 94, 103, 100. The third is 93, 101, 94. And the fourth one, which has a cloud coverage in this area, has these values 253, 245, and 230. That makes sense, actually. So the fifth one is... 
98, 101, and 97. So as you can see, these are the reflection values for the five images for this specific pixel. So as you can see from the values, the median of band 1 should be 93, 94, 98. And for band 2, there is two 101s, 103, 107, so that will be 103. And for the third band, 94, 97, 100, so it would be 100. Okay, now let me add the medians image and see if the values represented in this pixel are accurate. So if I go to output, add the medians, and it should be the cell. Okay, so if I click here, okay, so I have 98, 103, 100. Great, the medians looks accurate. That's it for this video. I'm sorry I was not able to upload the images in GitHub since they are almost 4.5 GB. But if you want, you can get 5 temporal images from this site. You don't need to use any coding, but you need to create a username and password. Also, make sure the images are overlapping at the same location in order for the code to run successfully. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something here.